So last week I looked at the running costs of the Mixergy IHP cylinder to see how it compared to running a gas boiler for your hot water and it didn't come out great for the IHP I've got to admit but my argument was that it's a premium product you probably weren't going to be getting the IHP if you were very cost conscious anyway. However I realised after getting a couple of comments from various viewers that actually I'd missed uh, a couple of scenarios where the IHP does make a lot more sense. So in my original video I assumed that you were replacing an old um, normal cylinder with a, a brand new unvented cylinder as an alternative to um, getting the IHP for example. But really if you were to consider getting an IHP the chances are you're replacing your whole heating system as well with something like an air to air system like we've got here in this house. So what we did was we got rid of our gas boiler and we replaced our heating and hot water with um, a, an air to air heat pump system for the heating and the IHP for the hot water. Now if you were doing something similar at least part of the cost of the um, IHP could be offset against getting a new gas boiler um, if that's what you were doing. So the two options are you either replace like for like so you replace your old gas boiler and your old cylinder with a new gas boiler and a new unvented cylinder or you uh, get uh, an air to air heat pump system and the IHP in which case the cost of the replacement gas boiler could be offset half against the uh, air to air heat pump system and half against the IHP um, and that actually changes the numbers somewhat so let me take you through those and uh, we'll see where we go. Right, so this is the spreadsheet that I created last week and it's got a load of stuff up here. I'm not going to go into all of this. I did all that in the last video, so I'm not going to repeat myself on that. Um, but down here I've added a couple of extra bits and bobs. So previously I had these columns here for the IHP, the different size cylinders you can get. The current cost of the IHP, that's including VAT. I'm still not entirely convinced that uh, VAT should be necessary for this, but uh, once I know more clearly whether that's the case or not, I'll let you know. Um, and then we had the regular unvented cylinder um, as the alternative to getting the IHP. Now what I've done in addition to that from last week is add this, these two extra columns where um, I account for the cost of a replacement gas boiler as well. Now I, I've assumed that the gas boiler replacement would cost you £1,500 and it would cost £1,500 to install so a total of £3,000. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I'm super accurate with that. I had a quick look online, um, got a couple of numbers, but uh, I suspect these numbers could be very different um, depending on the situation. So if you were interested in doing this sort of thing, replacing your gas boiler and uh, with an um, air-to-air heat pump and IHP, then definitely put more appropriate numbers in here for your situation. But what I've got here, and this is the important thing, this fraction of um, the replacement gas boiler which you're assigning to the hot water. So what I mean by that is if you were replacing your heating and hot water system then um, the, if the alternative was, be, was to do that with a, a gas boiler then you could consider half of the gas boiler cost to be offset against your air to air heat pump system and half against the IHP. So that's what I mean by 0.5 here. However, if your opinion was that your gas boiler was only used a quarter of the time for hot water and three quarters of the time for heating, then you could put uh, 0.25 here, and one quarter, for example. But uh, just to keep things simple, I'm going to start with half. Um, and now we can look at the payback time in these green cells here to see um, how that compared to um, last week's video. Now, in last week's video, that would be the equivalent of setting this to zero. So you're considering none of the replacement gas boiler cost to be offset against the cost of the IHP. So if I set that to zero, this is what we had last week and you can see um, in the situation where you had a, a 250 litre um, cylinder and you used all of it every day. So this might be quite a big family, say two or three kids and two adults. Uh, you could assume that you would pay back the cost of your IHP um, due to the lower running costs in 15 years. So that's still pretty high. Um, and obviously for any of these other situations it's higher still. So this is the situation we had um, last week. However, if we now offset half of that cost um, against uh, of the gas boiler against the IHP, that brings it down a fair bit. So now we're talking eight and a half years for the 250 litre using the whole cylinder every day. Uh, for Kat and I, we're in this sort of situation here. We have a, a 180 litre cylinder. There's just the two of us. We use about half of it every day. So that would theoretically pay back in 15.8, uh, let's call it 16 years, something in that ballpark. Um, so yeah, still not great for um, someone like Kat and I where we, where we don't use super loads of water, 
but if you are a heavy hot water user then you could consider this would be a reasonable payback for the IHP so this is definitely the sort of situation where um, I would consider the IHP to be a reasonable investment. Now one thing I should note here is that obviously the uh, the warranty for the heat pump part of the IHP is only five years so that's shorter than this uh, payback time so you might find yourself in a situation where your heat pump side of your cylinder fails between five and ten years say I would hope it would last longer than five years I should certainly expect it to last anywhere up to 10, 10 years plus um, most heat pumps are, are pretty uh, sturdy so that it should last longer than the five-year warranty however if you were in the unlucky situation where it was out of warranty um, and uh, it hadn't yet paid back you might find that you need to replace that part of it now the beauty of the IHP of course is that the heat pump and the cylinder are separate components which means you don't need to replace the whole thing you would only need to replace the heat pump itself. Uh, now I don't know what the cost of just the heat pump component is, it's certainly going to be significantly less than the cost of the full cylinder. Um, it might be at half um, potentially so you might, might want to consider um, factoring that in um, to your calculations uh, uh, given um, what the payback is. Um, but yeah that's, uh, that's definitely something worth thinking about. Another commenter also pointed out that if you've got rid of your gas system entirely then that means you no longer have a gas standing charge. Now that could also be considered as potential saving against the running cost of the IHP. So I've also added that as a little extra component up here. So um, what I've got here is the uh, gas standing charge in pence per day and once again the fraction that I'm assigning to the hot water. So uh, let's assume that you got rid of your gas boiler. Now you're saving half of the running cost for example uh, from, the gas, from the gas standing charge by um, not using gas for your heating and you're saving half of the standing charge by not using your gas standing charge for the hot water. So um, that's what I mean by 0.5. Again, you can change this depending on the fraction you think is relevant to you. And that just changes the running cost um, here of the equivalent gas for um, your hot water there. And that will um, once again change the savings that you make in these cells here and the payback time here. So let me go back to the situation where we had last week um, where we had zero there and zero here. So I was slightly misleading earlier when I, uh, when I showed you the numbers when I set this to zero and hadn't set this one to zero. Um, but now this is entirely equivalent to what we had uh, last week. So last week um, the payback was 19.9 um, years. Um, if I set this to 0.5 here, uh, this is what I showed earlier, 15 years. So I was slightly off there. But uh, then if we set this to 0.5 as well, that brings it down even further. So there you go. Those are the two components that I've added um, since last week. So I consider this a valid scenario if you were replacing your entire gas central heating and hot water system with something like we've got air to air plus IHP um, but it would also be relevant if you were building a new house for example and your options were either installing a new heating and hot water system powered by gas or just going straight in with something like air to air plus an IHP or maybe some other um, HVAC system. So there you go just a quick update based on some feedback I had last video. I uh, hope that was interesting and useful to you and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.